Hello! I decided to do a tutorial to show you how I made this coffin card. It's shaped like a coffin. Um, I didn't do anything on the inside of this one. I just left it blank. But on the one I'm going to make today, I'm going to decorate the inside. So what we're going to use is the beautiful gate die. We're going to use just, this is the haunted house from last year. We're just going to use this little tree die. And then we're going to use, this is the Halloween, um, this set. We're going to use the bat. And if you don't have the beautiful gate, this one has the gate, so you can always use that one because it does open just like the other one. And if you don't have a gate, but you have the scaredy cat dies, this one with the little cat faces, you could always just make this your focal piece and put your little, cut your image out and put it behind there, whatever image you want to use. This is uh, Anna Griffin Summer and Fall. Um, there was words and stuff, and I, I cut the little kitty out of that one. This is old. This is like a cricket. And then i um, going to use this bat and this ghost and this spider from the original Spiders and Specters. And if you don't have any of that, this is an old one called Seasonal Wishes. And it has a, you can see at the bottom, there's a little pumpkin and a little leaf. And yeah, there's the pumpkin and there's the leaf. So just thought I'd give you some ideas of stuff you can use. Uh, so put this out of the way. Here is the template for this, okay? And I just drew it myself. What I did was I took the gate I cut out the gate with the shadow layer. You can just use the shadow layer. And I saw how wide I needed it to be. I knew I was gonna wanna put some stuff down here and a little bit of stuff up there. So I made it just slightly wider than the bottom of this gate. And then I gave myself just a little bit of wiggle room right here at the widest point. So this whole thing is 10 and 3 eighths inches long. And then, uh, quite a little glare going on there. Um, across is five and three quarters. The length of the side up to that point is eight and three eighths from here to here. And then this is three and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter. So it's not difficult to do. So um, this is what I'm going to use for a base this time. And I'm using cardboard. Uh, on this one, I just used cardstock. Uh, because I was just winging it. I was just making it up as I went along. I really didn't have a plan other than I was going to use the gate and I was going to use this image. Everything else just kind of happened. And so I ended up having to go back and I think I just used some black cardstock for the base. And um, what I did was I drew my base, but then I... I made it longer, like see this one with the cardboard, it only goes up to there. But when I made it out of paper, I went all the way up to the top because on one of them, and then it folds right there, you score it and you fold it. So when you make your second piece, you put glue on the back of where you, uh, this little piece right here, and then you glue it around to the back of your second one of these, and then that makes your tent fold. But today, I don't want to keep layering a bunch of paper to make it uh, thick enough that it will stand up. Because if it's too floppy, it's not going to stand up. So, this is what we're going to do. I've got this cardboard. This is just from um, a back of a paper pad. 
and I save all of those and I save all the cardboard that comes in the cardstock from Anna Griffin. So this is a little piece of Tyvek. Tyvek is what, um, well, it's actually what they wrap houses with before they put all the siding on. But um, you can buy these little packs of Tyvek from Amazon. And uh, they also make the sh shipping pouches out of these that you get stuff in the mail. And you can't really tear it. Um, and so this is what uh, album makers use when they're making an album from scratch with chipboard. And that's how they make their hinges because it won't tear, it won't wear out. So that's what we're going to do on here. And I kind of screwed up because what I was going to do was this piece right here was going to actually be attached to the back of this. This is going to be the back of the card. But I got carried away and I put my uh, paper on the back before I glued this on. So I'm, what we're going to do is I'm just going to glue it. I glued it to the inside of the back. And then we're going to put the front I've already got my in um, this is the front that's the inside of the front I've already put my craft paper on there and I've inked around the edges and then this is also the this is the back the back of the card this is gonna be the inside of the card where we're gonna decorate and then we're gonna put pattern paper right here and this is the front of the card so we're just gonna put them together like this so they're nice and even Okay, and then we're just gonna wrap this around and glue it. I wonder where that terrible glare is coming from. I don't know. That's a little bit better though. All right, so I'm just gonna put glue all over this piece of Tyvek. And then I'm gonna stand this up again. I'm gonna make sure that it's nice and even. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around and glue it down. Okay, so it's just wrapped around from, it's on the, it's, see and it should be, it should be on the back of this one and just go right around to the front. But I messed up, so. But this'll work. So I'm gonna have to be careful with it because it's not all the way dry, but so there's your, there's the hinge. And uh, if it was wrapped around the top like it's supposed to be, it would look better and it wouldn't have as much play in it as it does, but when you do yours, you can do it right. Or you can just do the paper version and make the fold. Either way. So, there we go with that. Now, this is the paper I'm going to put on the, let's do the inside first and get that done. So this is the one that I'm gonna put on the inside. I've already cut it to size and I've already inked the edges. I've already inked the edges of these, that craft paper too. So let's just go ahead and get this put on there. Real quick, Clyde. I guess you can see the whole thing now. So, and I'm gonna show you a little trick when I do the front of how to get these the right size so that they're, so that when you put them on, everything is lined up. A little glue on my fingers. Okay. So I'm just gonna smooth out that glue under there with my Cricut thingy. I can't even think of what that's called at the moment. Scraper, I guess? And this glue, I love it because it stays wet for a really long time. And see, it moved a little bit, but I can just slide it back over there where it goes.
Okay, so that's the inside of the card. We're going to decorate that. And this is the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue this uncut piece of paper to the front. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to make sure we glue it on there, right? Um, it's going to have to go really close there. Then we're going to flip it over and then I'm just going to hold it up in the air and take my scissors and just cut around it and it'll be a nice perfect uh, what glue do I want? I guess I'll use this glue. Okay, make sure I get some right up at the top there. I don't want it to smoosh out, but I want to make sure that it's out by the edge is pretty good. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna turn it around and lay it on this piece of paper. And I'm gonna line it up with the bottom. Smash it down. I'm going to carefully pick it up, turn it over, and now what I can do is just cut it. be the right size won't be too too small you just butt your scissors right up next to the cardboard I was having a little thought there for a second <laughs> So now there's your front and it's perfect okay so we're gonna set that up there and let it dry and while that's drying I've already cut out this gate and I need to do the shadow layer but I wanted to show you Ooh, that's really got a glare I wanted to show you Wow I think it's from my overhead light. Uh, so when you cut a shadow layer or any kind of die cut where you're gonna have a lot of just solid flat and you don't want it to get marked up from all of the markings on your magnet map and you know you get stuff on your uh, plate too. I've got marks on my plate and that's not even because the die was face up on the plate. That was the back side of the die that did that. But anyway, just take take uh, take all your shims out. So no metal shim and I have a cardboard shim. I'm taking that out. And then I just got a piece of paper, copy paper. And I'm going to sandwich that in the copy paper. And that's going to help protect that orange paper from getting marks on it. And I'm gonna make sure that, yeah, I'm gonna put that face up so that's not touching the paper. I'm gonna run that through real quick. Go. And then next we're going to put the gilding, the gold gilding wax on here. And I think I'll move my camera down for that so it's a little closer. So now this came out looking Great. There's no, there's no marks in it or anything. And not that you're gonna see most of it because we're gonna put the gate on top of it, but it makes me feel better knowing that it's a nice, pretty <laughs> layer under there. 
So I just thought I'd show you that little tip. I, whenever we print something and you know it was a mistake or we're done with it, we're not gonna use it, we have a pile that we save those uh, that paper in, so I use those in here all the time. Okay, so let me get rid of that guy there. I can put this away. Put a little leaf. Okay, don't use that anymore. I'm gonna put gilding wax on our gate. I'm gonna get my thing ready there to clean my fingers off with. And I think I'm gonna just use the back of this piece of paper so I don't get it on my table. Okay, I'm gonna move this down just a smidge so you can see. And I'll move this up there. All right, we did this the other day, so just a tiny bit on your finger. And then just barely rub it over there. And this gate turns out really pretty. <laughs> I really like it. I love, this is just the cheapo matte black plain old cardstock from Joann's. It comes in a big fat ream and it's really cheap. In fact, when I bought it, I was like, oh, this stuff's kind of ugly. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I use it all the time actually especially if I want to put gilding wax on it because this takes the wax really well. It looks really pretty. Yeah, you guys can see that pretty good, huh? A little more on there. And I want, uh, I kind of like it to have a little bit of a heavy look with the wax on this one. Not, I mean, not super heavy, but especially where this detail is. Because it's really pretty over there a little bit better. There, I think that's good. It's really pretty, huh? Okay, done with that. Let me clean my finger off. Paint glue on my fingers. Okay. Now we'll get rid of this. And now we've got our little image, which I've run through the Xyron machine. Um, this is just from, it's an old postcard uh, image from the internet that I thought was really cool. I didn't know it, I just thought it was cool and I saved it on my phone. And then I thought, ooh, I'm gonna make a card with that, make him peek it out from behind that gate. So I'm just gonna peel off the back. I just wanna, you don't wanna peel the picture off of the backing. You'll make the picture curled really bad. So you wanna just gently pull the backing off of the picture. And then I'm just gonna mount it onto this black, piece of black cardstock here, just so it's not so flimsy because it's just piece of copy paper. So I get that on there fairly straight. And then I gotta trim it down just slightly. It's what the width is fine. This is picture is five by three and a half. Yep. Five by I printed it at three and a half by five. So in order for it to fit on the back, okay, now these these gates open and they're right along that you'll see you'll see it's pretty obvious where you can bend it open. 
And I didn't open them all the way, but they're open slightly. Ooh. I'm going to have to put a piece of tape back there. I think I'll move that camera back up just a smidge now. Okay, so your gates are just going to go like that. So this picture, I wanted his hat to show. So I decided I'd cut off some of his legs. And I wanted to make sure I got his hand over here. He's got these creepy little hands. <laughs> I love this picture. I think it's so cool. Okay. So I just kind of put it on there like that. So his hat's just below the top of that gate. And then what I did, let me grab my pencil. Because I didn't want to screw it up and have to print it again. So then I just drew a little line up here so I know where to cut it. And then the same thing on the bottom. So now I can just cut it just slightly above that line. And then this one I'll cut on the line or slightly below the line. And now... He's just the right size, and so he is going to get put on the back. Make sure he's right side up. Anyone want to make sure it's centered? And I'm going to just double check. Yes. Oh, see, it's you can see it sticking up there, so I have to make sure I get that. When I glue that on, I get it just below these openings in the die cut right there. Oh, I'm going to have to make it shorter. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and glue it on, and then I'm just going to trim off this little piece on the bottom that's sticking out slightly because I'd rather have it too long than too short. So I'm just going to put my glue on here. It goes. Yeah, you do it pretty close to this opening here. And then right across the bottom. Make sure it's right side up. I'm going to turn it upside down because I want to make sure that I don't get the top of this. I can go out a little bit with my glue, I guess. Okay. So I'm going to center it and make sure I don't go past those little openings. There we go. Oh God, it's upside down. No, it isn't. All right, so now I just gotta trim just a tiny little bit off the bottom that you're not even really gonna see anyway, but there. So there's our little gate with the little guy behind there. And I put, of course, I put this sparkle pen from Crafter's Companion all over him, which I should have done before, but I forgot. And it dries really fast. You gotta shake them up. I always forget to shake them. It dries super fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put it on right now. And then by the time we get done with what we're gonna do next, he'll be dry. I put it on his whole thing. And you can't see it in my picture on Facebook, but it looks really cool in person and it almost makes him look creepier. 
I didn't put it on his face. I left his face alone. And it's a little tricky getting it on these little pieces out here, but I just tried to go really light. See, you can see that on there, huh? That looks so cool. I have the sparkle pens. I totally forgot about this. Okay. Every once in a while, you got to give it just a little squeeze, get some more juice down there to the tip. Okay, now I gotta do his little cane. Oh, I got carried away there. And his hand. I think we're good. Just make sure his hat's good. Okay, there we go. He's all sparkly. And it looks even better when it's dry because it's still kind of wet. All right, so let's set that aside. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna do right now? Oh, okay, while he's drying, which won't take very long at all, I'll go ahead and uh, ink this last edge on here because all, all the other edges are inked except for this one I just glued on. So I'll just open that up. We'll just, and I got a little impatient when I was inking. I'm kind of an impatient edge inker. And then I end up making it look kind of yucky, so. And this is just, uh, this is a Spectrum Noir Quick Dry in Seal Brown. I love the Crafter's Companion ink pads. They're great. They have the Quick Dry, which, oh. The quick dry is great for stamping. It's great for doing anything like this because the second it hits something porous like paper, dry. There's no smearing. So like with pigment ink, it takes longer to dry. And I always end up, you get a, you know, it's it's got more color to it, but I always end up getting it on me and then getting it on my card where I don't want it. And then I'm having to strategically place embellishments to cover up where I got the ink, where I didn't want it. All right, so now I'm just gonna do across this top here. And I did the sides of the cardboard and everything earlier, so it's all, everything's inked everywhere. Okay. Done with that guy and put him up there. And let me just clean my ink off real quick. Okay, so now this guy is, he's probably about 90% dry. So we're going to put foam squares on the back and we're gonna put him, oh, did I glue it? Let me see. Yeah, I just glued him because he doesn't need to be on foam. So we're just gonna put some glue on here and glue it to the shadow layer. Can put foam on it if you want, but there's so much other junk on top and that there's lots of dimension on this card. Lots of texture. I'm make sure it's 
stays on really good. Okay, so we'll just stick this on here. stay on on the bottom. I gotta hold it for a second. Okay, so there's our gate with our shadow layer. So pretty. All right, now we are going to slam this together and I'm going to show you a little secret. So you know when Anna does her tutor or her demos and she has everything already with adhesive and foam squares on it on these backing from these are the pieces from Xyron after you peel it off the design team puts all of her demos together for her this is I was on her design team and this is what we did so you put everything if it's got foam the foam's already on it if it just has a tape runner uh, that's already on there. It's all laid out, ready to go. So that all she has to do is just slam them together. That's why sometimes you'll notice that she looks like she doesn't know what she's doing because she can't figure out how the card is supposed to go together because she didn't look at it ahead of time. All right, so this, uh, let me see, was this on foam? Yeah. Yeah. So we got, we're gonna put foam on here. This is the foam from the Dollar Tree that I love, because it's super sticky. Um, my Dollar Tree doesn't have any right now, but I have a bajillion of them. So what we're gonna do is, this ghost is gonna go up here. And, oh, um, so this little bingo card right here, that is Anna Griffin, but I didn't have any more. So uh, I just went on the internet and I found one and I printed it and I just mounted it on some black card stock so it was sturdier. So that's gonna go in here. I'm gonna put that in first. Um, trying to look at my other card, just make sure I get it sort of similar. I'll just go ahead and put that in. And then the little ghost went over here. And I don't think anything else is behind. So we're gonna go ahead and put our foam on. Just kind of put it wherever. This foam is so sticky, I love it. And it's thick. So if you need to double double up your regular foam, you can just use one of these instead. And you cut them down and make them smaller. I just wanna make sure. Um, okay, so I have a couple of leaves that are gonna go over here, kind of underneath the top of that gate, so. Make sure you can still see. All right, uh, I want to get this gate kind of down about the same place I got it on that other card, which was pretty much as far down as I could go without it hanging over. If you go down too far, it hangs over. And then you can just use the words on there. Oh, and this is that... Uh, Anna Griffin, I'm not gonna press it too hard in case I decide I wanna move it. Uh, Halloween paper, same Halloween paper. I used the other day for something, but I don't remember what now. Losing my mind. So we're gonna stick a little leaf right there and let him hang over. And then we're gonna stick another little leaf right there. And We got 
this little bat. I've already got the foam on the back. There's just one layer here, and then it's doubled up over there because it's going to go on top of those. Uh, yeah. On top of the leaves, so it has to be. I want to make sure. Okay. And then, oh, I forgot to plug in my hot glue gun as usual, so I better get that plugged in. I like to glue the flowers down and the ribbons. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this boo goes on after I get that ribbon on, so we'll just leave that off for now. Um, here's a little bat that I had over here, and I have these little two spiders and a cat that I don't have on that original card, but I just thought I'm going to make extra bats and some spiders and a cat and see if I can put them on there somewhere. So these little trees, they already have foam on the back, and they just go right over there. right down by the bottom. And they sort of interfere with the gate just a little bit, but it's not a big deal. And so this is a little bit different uh, sentiment for the bottom because I didn't have another one of those Halloween night ones. Um, oh, I also put a little green um, cardstock behind the trees this time. So I just cut a second layer in that dark green and just made a little uh, shadow layer with it. These didn't have that. So I just thought, mm, I'll just add a little green, why not? So this is just gonna go, well, I need to get my pumpkins on there. So let's see, those are gonna go right at the bottom. So will this fit in there? Oh, I think I can make this work. straight. It's hard to tell when you're not directly over it. I think I'm going to put more foam on those pumpkins so that they're higher than that. And my foam is right here. So I'm going to put another layer right there. And then I'm going to put another one or just put one on there. And I think, yeah, there. See, now it's high enough that they can clear that. I like those little pumpkins, they're cute. Okay, so then I had uh, on the original card, I have green and uh, this color leaves, but I don't have any more green leaves. So I'm just gonna put these on. So, um, wow, these are stuck together really good. So I used the part of the leaf to cover up the bottom of the tree so the tree was anchored underneath that leaf. And then I just kind of stuck that other one on there. And then when my hot glue gun gets ready, I'm gonna stick some hot glue under those so they stay on better. And I just alternated them. So that one is up there on that side. So I'm gonna put it down there on this side. So then I'll put this leaf up here. Put that one down there. And then I put a little bat. Um, yeah. So there was a little bat kind of peeking out. Oh, uh, he kind of goes behind the flower. So, we're going to have a little bow right here, and a little flower, and then he kind of goes right there. Is my hot glue gun ready? Just about. Yep, I think it's just about ready. So, let's go ahead and squirt some glue. 
under these leaves so they don't come off. That was easier than foam since they're kind of layered on top of each other. Oh crap. That was almost a catastrophe. Okay. And now I'm just going to glue this bow on right there. And I love using hot glue for my bows. Then they don't fall off. And then I didn't have the same flowers um, that I put on this card, so I just found some other ones that were kind of neutral like that. So we'll just glue that on right there. And then there's a little bat kind of just flying off over that way. I think I'm going to move this one down just a smidge. Man, that, <laughs> that foam square was really grabbing. There. He's just kind of peeking out now. All right, so let's see the top. So we've got a plaid bow. Oh, I need it. Well, I'll cut them off. I'll cut the bottoms of the bows off after I get them all on. So that goes like that. You know, you could put your bow like that if you want, but for this, I just liked the look of the ends of it facing that way. And then you're just gonna put that one on top. And then the bow to you is gonna go in there. So I wanna make sure I get, and you kind of cover up those leaves a little bit. So if you wanna leave those leaves off, you can, but when you look at it up close, you can see them behind there and it still looks cool. Okay, so I'm going to glue this one on. Oh, it's hard to commit sometimes. <laughs> and what I did on that other one, because I didn't want to cover up the bat, was I just stuck that underneath the bat's wing. This ribbon has wire, so I'll fluff it up after it's dry. The other ribbon I used was different, but I ran out of that. And at least I had some more black and white gingham, so that was good. All right, so this just goes right on top. burn myself so I'll just push it down with that and I'm gonna push it towards the that way just a little bit so it's not quite so high because we're gonna stick this flower on there anyway so it's gonna cover that up then that flower won't be sticking out quite so high there so we'll stick this one under here too so we're not completely covering up our bat. That glue's not quite dry yet. So there's the flower. And then the boo to you just kind of goes right there. So we'll glue this little flower on. so far so I always wait till I get my ribbons on or my bows on to cut the ends off um, yeah, that's not too long I'll just leave it cut that off like that so there's the top part done and I got the bow on the bottom, so it looks like 
We're done with the front, unless I decide I want one of these creepy little spiders that I put red glitter eyeballs on. <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> Let's see, is there a place that we can put this little spider? How about right here? There. Little a spider right there. I didn't put a spider on my other one because Yadira is, she's got a one of those irrational fears of spiders. And she can't even see a picture of a spider or she flips out, so. Um, all right, I don't think I'm gonna put the cat on the front. And I got two extra bats here, just cause if I wanted them. So that's it for the front. So here's, we're gonna decorate the inside in just a second, but so here's the one I made the other day. And then there's the one we just made. So that looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's decorate the inside real quick. So I thought I would just put a little sentiment. It's not little though, it's actually pretty big. Um, right about there. Get that straight. It's hard to see what when you're not right over it. Okay, so right about like that. And then I have this gold leaf from some card kit. I don't even know what kit. And that is just going to get tucked up there like that. And then these two little flowers are from the mini Halloween stickers. And so I'm going to put one. I'm going to end up having to stick some foam under that. But I'm gonna have one kind of a little bit on top of this sentiment. Oh, I maybe not because I'm gonna put this under. And then I'm gonna put that one right there. And then I have another little gold leaf. Oh, I gotta move this up so you can see. There we go. Another little gold leaf for the bottom. Another one of those little flowers. And a little pumpkin from some card kit. I don't even know what. It's an Anna Griffin card kit, but I have no idea what kit. And then you have your little room right here for a sentiment, if you want a sentiment. And if you want a little kitty in there, you can put a kitty. And you can put a creepy little spider up there if you want. Or you could just leave it cute in the middle. And I got these little bats. I don't know. So... Yeah, I don't think I need a bat. I think we'll leave the kitty down there, though. And leave that little spider up there just for the heck of it. All right, so there you go. It's all done. Let me trim this ribbon down here. I guess I'll do it this way. That looks better. All right, well, I hope you liked that tutorial. Put our little guy in there. He's so cool. Love him. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. There's the back again. There's the inside again. If you want to take screenshots. Try and get my arm out of there. And screenshot that. And we can screenshot that. Okay, that's it. Bye-bye.